Acts 22. Hey guys, it's Clint Paschal with the Waters Church and we're doing the Bible together. The only thing I really want to bring out in this chapter are the first two verses. Verse 1, Paul says, Listen, brothers and fathers, to what I have to say. Listen to my defense. That's almost exactly what Stephen said as he was giving his defense in Acts chapter 7. So it's almost like Paul is hearkening back to the words spoken by the first Christian martyr that Paul himself endorsed. Now you see Paul giving the opportunity as well to do a defense at a, a situation which could very well be his execution. And he basically says the same thing that Stephen says. And then in verse two, it's incredible. It says, and when he began to speak in Aramaic, the crowd became very quiet. What's the big deal about Paul speaking in Aramaic? Well, if Paul would have been addressing the Jewish court, the Hebrew court, he would have spoken in Hebrew. Um, but he does something different. He speaks in Aramaic. Why? Because this would have been the dialect of the people that were in this riot in Jerusalem coming against him. So what does he do? He gets on their level and speaks their language. This says so much about Paul, not the least of which that he's a very learned guy who knows languages, but that he takes this opportunity not to look good in front of the Jewish authority, but to connect with an angry crowd and speak their language. Powerful that Paul would look at these people that he knows wants to want to kill him. And he's very quick to say, I'm gonna do everything I can do to relate with you. I'm gonna speak your language. And the crowd responded and they became very quiet. Now, that's not to say that the crowd was amicable to Paul's communication and to his cause and to him personally. They, they weren't excited to hear him. In fact, it ended very badly. But what did Paul do? He took this opportunity to say, hey, I, I, wanna, I wanna connect with you personally. And he gives a, an incredibly powerful defense. And, and what is his defense? It's the same thing he always does. He teaches them history. He gives them history about who Jesus is and what Jesus means to him personally. Goes through the whole account of Christ visiting him on the road to Damascus. And it's just this beautiful thing. And how does it end? Well, the crowd chants, kill him. Um, the Roman authority does, you know, muscle memory. They get ready to beat him. And they're like, all right, if you're whipping up this big of a frenzy with the crowd, then clearly you need to get beaten. They start to beat him while they're about to, about to beat him. And then <laughs> Paul very nonchalantly is like, I hope you know you're about to flog a Roman citizen. I was, I was born this way. I was born a Roman citizen which really scares the Roman authority and the Roman authority releases him. And then they say, you need to meet with the chief priest. And they, he addresses the Sanhedrin in the next chapter in Acts 23. And we are dialing in on the bravery and boldness of Paul. He is, he is to be respected so much. This guy is, this is like our ancestor, y'all. This is like our guy, our Paul. But never forget in Acts 22 verse two, he spoke in Aramaic to make a point. I'll relate with you. And not in a stooping way, like speak some stooping, you know, I'm uh, on your level down. It's not, that's not the point at all. He's, he's, he wants to get into their minds, into their culture and, and show them I can relate with you. And you can relate with me, guys, you're my brothers. And it gives them a heartfelt defense and it worked out bad for, badly for Paul. But I think the point is beautiful that Paul's going to take every single chance that he can to be an evangelist, no matter what it costs him. And he's so ready to give up his, his beautiful life for the cause of Christ and uh, not just to mirror Christ in the process, which he does. And he just tracks his behavior along Christ's behavior, but he also mirrors Stephen's behavior, who, who all was doing the same exact thing, quoting Jesus so many times, even up right up to his death. And Paul is saying, hey, I'm going to relate with you and I'm going to give you my defense now. That's our Paul taking every chance that he can to lead that next person to faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So inspiring. In the next chapter, we see him address the Sanhedrin. It gets pretty intense. 
it's really, really awesome. You gotta love Paul, man. Always, always respect this man. Always think of him as yours. He's your Paul. He is our example. I cannot wait to fist bump this guy and embrace this guy. And just say thank you for your bravery, man. For your boldness. It has meant the world to me. Acts 22. Mm, gorgeous. Thanks so much for doing the Bible together. Mm.